morning. So, hey, uh, you ever have one of those days where it just does not go the way you thought it was going to go right out of the gate, like the very first thing you had planned uh, <laughs> went awry? So, I had a sweet location set up for this morning, and uh, so something happened, and it just didn't pan out at the last minute, and so I am improvising. This isn't the spot that I was intending to be this morning so it's bright it's a sunglass day it's noisy there's all kinds of traffic and in a minute ago the train started moving so we'll just see how this goes but uh hey i said i was going to be here live at eight so i'm here live at eight we're going to talk about tattoos i'm going to pray and then we're going to dive in and uh talk a little bit about uh ink and the scriptures and uh what i think maybe god's heart is so let's pray God, we love you. Thank you so much for this beautiful morning and the sun shining on us. Um, just pray that you would be with each and every one of us this morning. God, give us wisdom and discernment to um, kind of understand and know your heart when it comes to things like uh, tattoos that can be controversial at times and, and people have different opinions that are uh, based on all kinds of things besides scripture most of the time. So um, we love you. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, this morning on uh, Tattoo Edition, we're going to start off first with uh, the, the place everybody starts off when people who uh, oftentimes are Christians or kind of grew up in a church or something or heard their parents or grandparents say to them, you're not supposed to get tattoos. Even the Bible says you're not supposed to get tattoos. And they're, they're talking about one verse in Leviticus. And the verse in Leviticus talks about not uh, marking up your body or put an ink on your body, and it talks about not uh, scarring your body. And so, the, the heart behind that, so this, is, this is awesome, somebody just pulled up right next to me. Welcome to uh, live uh, videos. I feel like one of those weathermen where people are hazing them in the background trying to get their attention. So, anyways, back to Leviticus. Uh, Yeehaw. So in uh, Leviticus, the passage, what they're really talking about is a couple of different things. We've got to understand the context. Uh, Israel was coming out of Egypt and going into the uh, land of the Canaanites. And in Egypt, they came out of a culture where the Egyptians, archaeology shows us um, that they would tattoo primarily women and it would uh, mostly be around their uh, areas of fertility. So they would tattoo their breasts and their abdomen and their thighs. And it was uh, considered to be like a good luck charm to, to help uh, instill fertility. And so there was that culture that they came out of. But in Canaan, it was a whole different deal. In Canaan, they actually uh, scarred their bodies and slashed their bodies. It was pretty gruesome stuff. And it was to honor the dead or to uh, honor their gods. And so they're going into a culture where these people were tattooing or marking their bodies and scarring and slashing and doing brandings. And, and the in, instruction in Leviticus was for a certain people at a certain time in a certain context. And it was about like, don't be like the pagans in the land that you're going into. Don't scar your body and mark it up. Don't be making pagan sacrifices or, or honoring pagan gods. Um, in, a, in, in the context in the world that they were living in. And so it makes sense in that passage why it was saying, hey, don't do these things because you're supposed to be a holy nation set apart, representing God, right? Like you're supposed to be different. And so I personally think as I interpret that passage, the, the heart behind it was God addressing his people in the context, in the environment they were surrounding themselves in or, you know, that they were going to be in. And it was about not marking yourself and not being like the pagans around you, okay? Now, some people might say, well, the same things apply today because, uh, you know, like, like all these pagans get tattoos and are you going to be like them, right? And, and I would say that's pretty short-sighted um, and kind of a pretty shallow view of trying to fast-forward that text to today. So the next thing is, um, I, I really just kind of jump forward into... Uh, Deuteronomy and Numbers and I want to read a couple of passes, passages with you this morning that I think just makes sense to me when it comes to the idea of getting tattoos and so one of them is one that a lot of people are really familiar with it's uh, Deuteronomy 6 
it says, uh, Deuteronomy 6, verse uh, 6, it says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you'll talk with them when you uh, sit down in your house, and when you uh, walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, shall, you'll bind them on uh, as a sign on your hand, and they shall be uh, as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so... The, the thing that he's talking about in this particular passage are these um, phylacteries and tassels. And so these phylacteries were these little wooden boxes that they would wear on their wrist, kind of like a, uh, you know, like the Swatch fashion watches that came along for a while. And anyways, they'd have these little things. They'd also wear them as like a headband with a little box on their forehead, like a frontlet. And these would be like uh, full of scripture. They'd have little scrolls, handwritten scrolls. And so it was a way to wear the text as a constant reminder to obey God's law, right? And not to give in to the desires of your heart. And so uh, another passage that it is really important to me when I think about wearing a tattoo is in Numbers. In Numbers uh, verse or uh, chapter 15, Verse 37, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel. Tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a cord of fabric of blue on the tassel of each corner. Uh, and it shall be a tassel for you to look at and to remember all the commandments of the Lord to do them, not to follow after your own heart and after your own eyes, which you're inclined to whore after. So you shall remember and do my commandments and be holy to your God. And I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. And I am the Lord your God. And so the tassels were, uh, sometimes you'll see people that'll wear uh, these tassels that look something like this and they'll put them on the four corners of their belt uh, or an undershirt that they'll wear or on a prayer shawl. And this is a, just kind of a representative of the tassel that they were talking about, that it would remind them of who God was, right, and what his commandments were. And as you saw this tassel, there's there's all kinds of amazing lessons that go behind the tassel, which I don't have time to get into this morning. But for me, this is just, this isn't scripture, this is just me, Thad's interpretation. Uh, for me as a Gentile, I'm not a Jew, I don't wear tassels. For me, I look at my tattoos as sort of my uh, modern day Gentile tassels. I wear tattoos that tell a story about who my God is. I wear tattoos that tell a story about scripture and that uh, actually wearing the text to remind me to uh, be a doer of the word, right? And so I think anybody you talk to, they'll say, well, Christian or not, they'll say their tattoos tell a story. They're, they got them for a reason. They represent something. They're a memorial or a remembrance of something. They, the tattoos tell a story, and that's why people love them so much, is they uh, represent things that are important to them. And so for me as a Christian, I think uh, that the content uh, or the, you know, the, uh, yeah, what you have your tattoo actually is about um, means a lot. And so for me, I, I love the book of Acts. We're teaching through it as a church right now. Uh, it's been super important and influential to me and my walk, uh, digging in and learning through the book of Acts. And so years ago, I got my first tattoo uh, at my daughter's prompting. She really wanted to get a tattoo on her high school graduation. She wanted to get one together. And so um, the tattoo I cho chose to get was she had a little more feminine one on her back that didn't really appeal to me. And so we got different tattoos, but we shared the experience. <clears throat> and I got this one which a lot of times it's hard to read, especially if I'm preaching or talking. It says unhindered, and it's from the book of Acts. It's actually the last word in the book of Acts. And so it talks about how at the very end of Paul's life, um, he preached the gospel, he taught about Jesus, he was even under house arrest, and, he, and yet he was unhindered. And so for me, if I was ever going to put a word on my body that just reminded me that the gospel is going to go forth unhindered, like God does his part to make sure that he removes all the hindrances, right? So even here under house arrest with guards nearby in Rome, who is very anti-Christian, uh, Paul, even in his last days, 
could say that the gospel went forth unhindered, like nothing could stop the advancement of the gospel. And I thought, man, that's something I need to remember and hold on to. And so for me, that's what that one's all about. And then on this side is another one from the book of Acts. It says, uh, with all boldness. And it's at the very same uh, verse in the, in the end of the book of Acts. And it talks about what Paul did, right? At, at the end of his life, he preached the gospel and taught about Jesus with all boldness. So, so Paul's part was to be bold in proclaiming the good news about Jesus right up to the very end. God's part was to make sure there was no hindrances, like he removed all the hindrances. And so for me, as I get tattoos, this right side of my body for me kind of represents my part. You know, what is, uh, what's my part in my relationship with God? And like Paul, I want to be known as a guy that is willing to preach and teach the, uh, the Bible and, and teach the gospel and teach about Jesus with all boldness. Like it's crazy enough to stand in a parking lot on the side of the road when there's people getting in and out of their cars looking at me weird and uh, who knows who cares, right? Like I want to be able to be known as somebody that will preach the gospel with all boldness and I want to remember God's part. And so my left arm, as, uh, as I feel like God gives me really cool ideas and I just feel like, man, those, that's something that I need to remember. Um, it's going to go on the wall of remembrance, right? And so I add things over time that are significant to me, whether it's representative of my part or it's representative of God's part. I have um, another one, which I'm not going to show you, that's uh, on my chest that says, by God's grace. And that was just a real important tattoo that I got with uh, Noah, my youngest son. We were in Israel last summer and we had the opportunity to go to the oldest running tattoo parlor in the world, like on the whole entire globe. There is no tattoo parlor that's been consecutively running longer than this one. It's in the old city in Jerusalem. And uh, so he and I got tattooed together at the oldest tattoo. He got a crazy awesome tattoo down his spine, which I'll tell that story another day. But, um, and so that's what I've got for starters. I actually have a, another tattoo scheduled for my side that I had planned on getting uh, right before this uh, COVID stuff happened and so I had to postpone that one. But when that one shows up and you see some new ink, you'll know if it's on my right arm, it's representative for me, it's representing my part. Like what is, what, if it shows up on my left arm and my left side, it's God's part. And so that's kind of what tattoos mean for me. Um, and again, I'm not saying that I'm, uh, you know, that this is the gospel, that I have it perfect. Um, that's just my understanding and my interpretation and kind of how I walk through the text. So um, if you've got questions or you want to talk more about that, write it in the comments or send me a direct message and uh, I'd be happy to visit with you and talk with you more about that. So uh, I'm going to pray and uh, pack up off the side of the road and go find some coffee and uh, move on to the next adventure today. All right. So let's pray. God, we love you. You're awesome. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Lord, for helping us understand your word in context for all the amazing archaeology and, and uh, scholars that have gone before us that help us know what the world was like when it was written to the people it was written to. And it helps us understand um, what those words meant then in context. Uh, God, just keep giving us understanding and discernment as we dig into the text. So we love you. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. That was kind of a long one this morning and probably loud, but uh, I'm out until Sunday morning. So I'll see you for church Sunday morning. Remember, we got a 9 a.m. and a 1030 service uh, going live on Sundays, and then I'll see you for Jesus' time on Monday morning at 8. You guys have an awesome weekend. See you later. Maybe. Maybe I'll see you later. Maybe I'll just see you right here for a while.